so thermostat's blinking. He hit the fan and up button at the same time, and uh, it didn't uh, didn't make it go into immediate. So usually, fan running is a limit switch. So we can get in there and check that limit switch. See what we got. We could be a little generic here. We can just yank it off. The change of state. It's obviously not the limit. Okay, yanked it off, and the LED light changed. The fan just kicked down and back up again, almost like the fan is calling because it changed speeds. So we're gonna go ahead and kill this. Look at that; it comes on immediately. So that tells me we probably got a thermostat acting up. We'll go ahead and make sure this thing cycles on and runs. Now this one here is also LP gas, as you can tell. So at least it's got that. This is a 2010 unit. It's got one of the newer hot source igniters, one of the silicone nitride. So generally we don't have too many issues with that. Single stage unit. One of the first things I checked since that fan was running is I checked my roll out. Looks like it's burning pretty clean in here. Uh oh, what happened there? out. Three and one. That's the pressure switch. I guarantee it. Which makes me think of bad boys plug. Let's go down here. Pressure switch did not close or reopen. And it's clear that this one here is probably going to be the one that's plugged up. So get my new cool Klein combo strippers. I like these a lot better than the Milwaukee's because they got a real freaking gripper on the front of that bad boy. So, get right on there. And I can just about guarantee you, look at that. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Off it comes, and no, no water. So let's go to the next one. No water, so we're good there. So the pressure switch shut down. But, something to keep in mind when you got one of these LP furnaces, that bad boy's wired in series with the pressure switch, so you could think it's a pressure switch that's on the draft motor, but it could be the LP one. Let's go take a look at their pressure on the tank. Looks like I got 80%. That's all the way open. One of the next things I'll look at is see what kind of venting they got. It's got a concentric. Generally, we don't have too many problems with that. And then to speed checkup, I have a uh, leftover hose. From one of the kits i'll literally unhook those hoses hook that on there blow through that thing and see what kind of restrictions i got i'll blow through both of them and uh if it's plugged up i yank the whole thing out if it blows through real easy i'll just go ahead and blow it out and move on uh the lp pressure was fine and uh so we'll get this hooked back up we're going to check our gas pressure coming in here and then we'll check our pressure here on our pressure switch. You gotta remember, you gotta take that cover off when you check your gas pressure on the manifold. I wanna check it also because of that cap being removed. We've got flame sensor accessible here. So we're gonna clean that. Our gas pressure tap is here on the side. That's where that comes in handy. All right, pretty well got everything zeroed out here. Give it a call for heating. What we're doing here is we're checking our incoming pressure and our outgoing. We can bounce back and forth between the two. Okay, so our manifold is 6 inches and a half. And our incoming is 12.64. I think this cuts out at 7. But definitely isn't nowhere near where it should be cutting out at. So it should be good there. reason our manifold pressure is low which makes me wonder why especially since it was open did somebody do deliberately open it or lower it what's what's the story here put it at 10 for now just in case there's something weird going on 
and make sure that cap sometimes in there that'll change it too like I said make sure that covers off when you're doing this it's running non-stop which tells me there might be something going on with that intake so let's close this part back up and put this cover on we'll see if this cover sucks in real hard or not Fresh change it a little bit. So what I'll do, if you notice, look at that, it's sucking it in really. Man, I'm not even have to try. So we might have a restriction on our air intake. Okay, what I use is a T, I put it in between. I only need technically this piece and that piece. For right now made a temporary bypass of the pressure switch so I can put this in there. So we'll go ahead and put that back on there. And we'll do the same thing to this other one. Go ahead and shut that down. We know our manifold and stuff's fine. We're gonna go ahead and zero out our meter again while it's disconnected for everything. I'm gonna go ahead and hook onto these T's, which like I said, I like doing it this way because it assures us that we're actually checking what the pressure switch is seeing and not just what the hose is seeing. So we're going to go ahead and run this with the door off of the burner box and see what we have beforehand. And uh, then we'll put the cover on and see what happens. This pressure switch is rated for 1.58 and we have 2.74. What I've noticed just as my own observance is usually it's almost double what it's rated for, almost. Let's go ahead and put this cover on and see how that changes. So we're gonna go ahead and let this thing kick on and see if it runs. Tell you what, we'll go ahead and shut her back down. What we're gonna do it with the door on, starting from the door on. Good enough to make it run, so let's see what happens here. So we're well high enough. Uh oh, I just gave it a call for gas to kick on and it didn't happen. No click from the gas valve. That was interesting. I have had where these little connectors in the gas valve don't make good connection. Generally, what it is is just two little prongs to a solenoid and it's got little scratchy connections that scratch onto it, and sometimes they won't make good connection. That's the 31 code. The uh, gas pressure switch we're going to remove, just for testing purposes only. Okay, let's wash it now. I'm pretty sure these aren't supposed to be mounted upside down. Can't remember. Don't know if that has anything to do with it or not, but. She's starting over again. Kicks on, it runs. If it never acts up again, then it was probably this doodad here. Yes, I called it a doodad. It's a thingamajig down by the monostat next to the witch we'll call it. You know what I mean. All right, so we're running. Look at our graph, it looks pretty good. We're going at 2.9 actually getting better as it gets the air warmer in there it's drafting better being thinner no drop out that's always a good thing yeah so i know our draft is not an issue that was something that people asked about before about how to properly check pressure switch i like to do it like this um that's the way i was taught from linux and a few others i mean I've seen their training videos and some of those aren't the greatest in the world, but yeah, I had it was in charge of us was pretty good. <sighs> so nothing's dropping out. Give her an old tap a a little shake of the goose juice wires. Kind of just tap my switch a little bit because these are little dumb things that sometimes if they're just barely making contact that they'll act stupid. Kind of tap my switch that way if like say it just barely tap you know barely making internally that it drops out that it would drop out we're not having any of those issues kind of come up here wiggle our 
wires, wire harness, limit switch, get the tap down in there, wiggle all this stuff. Basically, it appears to me what we have going on, and this is all high voltage in here, and as before, this is not for my homeowners, so don't do anything you see here. I don't want to be held responsible for your mistakes and you hurt yourself. So, yeah, she's not, not acting up. Whoop, got her to click. Mount, diaphragm, membrane, vertical or horizontal, natural or LP gas. So, that's horizontal giggles now granted this thing's been installed since 09 or 10 why is it just now acting up it might be the rubber diaphragm it's a little cooler out here right now you know why did you get away with not wearing your seatbelt for how long so what we're gonna do go ahead and shut her down wire back and then what I usually do is I'll put these back together. Another reason I have this extra piece here, some, some hoses are really big, some of them are small. I see this is what's really bad, is when you have multiple issues, multiple offenders, as old Mr. Dave would say. But, uh, you know, yeah, like the first thing I said, that thermostat was blinking funny, like it had some issues. Okay, from common to W, nothing. From common to G, I've got a call for G, but no heat. So we need to go back in and double check the thermostat again. It sounds like we've got a bad thermostat and a pressure switch is bad. All right, surprise, surprise, surprise. They've got themselves a heat pump. I did not notice that that little control module was mounted back here. We only got two wires inside, so it's trying to run the fan, which is fine. Question is, the, what else was going on so basically what I assume probably happened is it got colder the heat pump shut down because we're right in that 20 to 30 degree range they didn't switch over to the gas furnace like it should the gas furnace failed out then it got cold they said it came on one time which was when it probably got a little bit warmer got into the mid 40s and then the heat pump must have ran and worked so unless the heat pumps locking out too so let's go ahead and get the flame sensor clean and then go ahead and see what our settings are for our heat pump there we go like I said this has worked for me forever and ever and ever and ever I mean if it was if it was hurting that it hurt my hand more it don't so I think what we got going on like I said is this pressure switch is acting up it's probably our biggest issue right now so as you notice what we did while we were at is we went ahead and cleaned the flame sensor cleaned the condensate trap check the heat exchanger check the gas pressure basically did everything you normally do on a maintenance that you find to be boring because these are the things that need to be done so we got those things all cleaned up i'm not sure so what we're going to do is we're going to put this thing in auxiliary heat and we're going to test this thing out and see if it drops out all right went back through there and checked some of my settings and basically they had the gas furnace locking out at 35 degrees till so anytime the, uh, it was above 35 the gas furnace could not run the heat pumps locking out at 30 I find this to be a bad idea because if the heat pump fails and you're in that borderline area there's a chance of you know possibly freezing pipes stuff like that so I set that a little higher maybe 45 50 degrees if the gas furnace needs to run it needs to run it only has 15 minutes to satisfy which is adjustable on this thermostat that they've got so in the heat pump, like I said, shuts off at 30. So what I think was happening is we were colder and they said, see, it just dropped out. So this switch here I think is bad. So I think what we had here was basically, it was definitely below 30 degrees these last few weeks. And this has been going on for a while and they just now uh, had the opportunity to call us. So, uh, and Previously, back a few weeks, it was definitely below 30 degrees. So the gas furnace would have had to run. Well, the gas furnace couldn't run because this pressure switch here is malfunctioning. But right now, like I said, we're just basically gonna remove this thing out of the circuit. I just seen it drop out again. So 
So we'll go ahead and put this back to factory default. Pressure switch to bypass. Gas furnace is running. We'll see whether or not this thing shuts off. If it doesn't shut off, then I am pretty positive that this was our failure point. Still a running. So it appears to me we had a bad pressure switch. Now, like I said, as far as checking our temps and stuff, so we got 68, it looks like coming back. It's 72, three in the house. So we know that we're not sucking a lot of cold air from the attic. All right, even with it being radiant heat where it's at, it's 124. We said we had 68 over here. Do the math on it, we got temperature rise. So as far as making our adjustments on our gas, we're fine on that. So basically got our outdoor sensor here. Let's double check my wires. This must be an older version of the stat that I have because it doesn't show the outdoor temperature where you look at it from the main screen. I didn't think it was working. They had it for 60 minutes of continuous runtime. I switch it to 90. All right, it should be a little bit low. You could tell how fast it was starting to freeze up. And uh, should be somewhere around 318 and 80 something on our suction. Chances are with this cap being defective like it is, it's probably leaking there. But also with the age of it, wouldn't surprise me the coil probably has some issues also. Can't rush this stuff too much. 410A seems to always want to expand at the last minute and go berserk. You can actually check subcooling. They don't give you a rating for it, but it's coming back subcooled from the coil. We are right around 40 degrees, 42 degrees. Slowly getting her up there in that ballpark. About two pounds low. I don't know how long it's been since this has been checked, so it may have been a while. Not that that makes a difference, but yeah, 318 and 83 for about 300. So I'm gonna stop right there. That's uh, close enough. So I'll let them know. I've been keeping in constant contact with the uh, homeowner and letting them know what I've been finding and stuff like that. That way they understand, you know, why it's taking so long. Cause it just, there's so many different things that you're running into that, uh, you know, you want to do them a good job so you don't have to come back. So got that in there. Subcooling was 11. If you noticed that also, like I said, they don't give you those ratings, but generally you start doing as many geothermals and stuff is what we do. We start checking those sort of things. I was able to get the cap outside tightened down. Otherwise I got nothing in here in the evaporator. I scanned it with the DTAC, then I went ahead and hit it with the back rack. Nothing in here at all. So at this point, if it is a leak, which obviously it must be because it was two pounds low, uh, maybe we can catch it this summer. Uh, for right now, um, Everything's up and running. We just need to order that pressure switch and everything should be working fine for them. It's going to be a lot more efficient than what it was. If you guys like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one.